So welcome. This is February's edition of Light Painting Brushes Live. I'm really excited about this one, as I am with all of them. That that that's like my opening statement there every time. But I'm just excited to have the opportunity to do these, really. Um, but tonight I'm really excited because we've got Dennis Smith here. We've got Mitch Martinez. And the two projects that we're going to be talking about that these guys have done is just absolutely just phenomenal and really excited to talk about it. Um, so with that, Dennis Smith, welcome to Light Painting Brushes Live. You know, please introduce yourself. Uh, tell us how long you've been light painting. Uh, oh, my gosh. How, hello, everybody. It has been a while. <laughs> Uh, look, I um, I was trying to figure out, there's, there's always been a bit of confusion about when I made my first light painting. Uh, I reckon the EXIF was set wrong on the camera because it tells me 2008, but it was in 2009 I made my first image. So around about 15 years I've been light painting uh, and it's been continuous. It's, it's beautiful work and I know, you know, you, you continue to inspire a lot of people, you know, including myself. So just keep up that great work, man. Um, Amazing. So let me let me share my screen here real quick. So let's uh, before we get started, we're going to watch a quick little video right here. It still makes me feel queasy watching this happen. Unfortunately, it's a little jerky, but I think people will get the idea. <laughs> so those um uh, those lights man are just you know first off congratulations um you know again what an opportunity to bring light painting into the world of formula one um can you give us a little backstory about how this project came together yeah for sure look um uh, this this story that we're about to go this journey of half an hour we're about to go down is one full of uh, intrigue, uh, terror at the locations, uh, complex negotiate business negotiations. But one of the beautiful things that it it starts in a place of beautiful friendship uh, and trust. So there is no one in the light painting community, I'm sure, that doesn't know David Gilliver. He is a great friend of mine in Scotland, and he was approached by uh, an organization um, to look at this project because he's done some work in Saudi Arabia before and also with um, Lexus. And uh, he he got visibility on the brief, but realized that uh, as always, he was just ridiculously busy um, and the timelines were super short. So he, knowing that I've done a, a huge amount of car light painting in horrible situations, passed on my email address and that's how it started. Um, and then was followed by two months of wild planning, negotiation, scheduling, pitching, testing, <laughs> transferring files and video until uh, on the, oh my gosh, I've totally lost track of the dates. About two weeks ago, I jumped on a plane and headed to Saudi Arabia um, to make a set of images. And they're, they're stunning, man. Just what, a, what an opportunity. You know, for myself personally, I see these types of projects and and the opportunities to be involved with that, you know, is so inspiring. Um, mm. You know, could could you give us some insight about how we as light painters can add value to our own work to pursue, you know, opportunities such as this? Sure. Yeah. Well, look, I think um, probably I've made a lot of notes, but I one of the notes that I've made is, is there's going to be a few aspects to this chat. And just by the nature of it, and your question sort of wraps up the idea that we're going to be having a bit of a business conversation. There is going to be a bit of light painting involved. Um, but fundamentally, mate, I, I, so I'm a commercial filmmaker. So I have a commercial photography and filmmaking business. I've been in marketing and sales my whole life. I've always been self-employed. Um, and so when these opportunities come up, they tend to be they tend to be about a lot of stuff other than light painting. And so in answer to your question, I think anyone that is watching this or anyone that is a, a light painter that wants to pursue it in a commercial way, really the way that you can, if the question is how do I add value to my own work? Because there's a question, you know, we're going to be chatting about the business side of things later. Is really you need to really decide that this is something you want to pursue. You, if you want to go and have a crack at making a bit of income from light painting, you need to learn a bit about 
business, a bit about marketing, about all of the other aspects. And this is this relates to all art, by the way. Um, but really take the time to sit down, look at the work that you're producing, look at the work that you would love to produce in order to do this work and just attack it, just maul it with an insane amount of passion, time, blood, sweat and tears. And then you throw that into the mix with a little bit of understanding of how marketing works, how what com marketing companies and advertising companies look for in their work, um, mix all of that around and, and chuck in a bit of love and a bit of passion. And what might come out the other end if you bake it for the right amount of time is the opportunity to write an invoice. Um, yeah, I, th I think that that's an in summary. Right. <laughs> the answer to that, you know, I mean, it's very, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of misunderstandings in, in our community about um, what making money in the community or, or, or monetizing your art is all about. Um, it's a very, very, very complicated thing. Well, I mean, you you do it well, and you know, and to be involved with with projects like this is just absolutely yeah. amazing. And you know, and I had to look this up for this next question. So the average Formula Formula One car is around twelve to fifteen million dollars. Um, describe <laughs> to us the feeling of being right there, inches away from such an incredible machine. And, you know, light painting. I, I know I get excited just asking this question. Um, what 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 does it feel like in that moment? And and I understand that this was a mock up, right? Yeah. So I tell you. So I tell I tell you the thing. So this particular car is a mock up. It was an unimaginably high quality one. They this thing went off and on a truck about five times and didn't break once. But during um, uh, leading up to this, so historically I've done a lot of work with cars and some unimaginably expensive cars. And by the nature of um by the nature of light painting vehicles you're getting close with tools right so you can see how close some of these blades are uh and coming up in the, in the coming weeks there's a massive amount of video content coming uh showing the actual technique but it is a combination of terrifying <laughs> <laughs> um it's a bit scary right but we're going back so um we're just working on potentially going back uh for the grand prix and we're working on a program to do some work with the teams. So that will mean actually being near the cars and the drivers. And the reality is that uh, if you donk a car every now and then with a light painting tool, you're not going to do too much damage. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, scary as all shit uh, is the answer to your question, mate. It's, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, tell, tell us a little bit about the tools you were using. You know, what, what light painting brushes tools did you use for this project? Yeah, so it, it's um, yeah, it's really interesting. So uh, I, I, I have, I never assume that anyone sees anything I do online. But uh, after a few years of, of, of a massive array of projects, uh, 2024 in January, I packed away all of my light painting tools into the shed. Uh, and this year, for my personal work, obviously not commercial work, because because you're looking at it. But I'm only uh, using the ball of light tool. I'm just having a year of going back to basics. So I packed everything away in the shed, and then when this when this job went live, I had to go and unpack all of my gear out of the shed and pull out what I was going to use. I developed a few quite special tools uh, to create these sort of wind vortexy kind of things. But when I went into my rather large box of light painting brushes tools, there were a couple of absolute no-brainers. And in some of the images, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you have any, at the back of the vehicle, we were trying to replicate the look of sparks coming off the back of the car. I think uh, I actually have was... that video. Let me pull that. It's this next one. It's this one right here, I believe. Ah. I might have messed that up, but yeah, no, it, it, yeah, it, that's it, okay. It, that that play. It's got it's got you doing the fiber in the back of the yeah yeah. So we wanted to create this effect of sparks coming off the back of the car because Jeddah is a street circuit notorious for sparks, and so what I um what I did is I got a black fiber optic and I put a red gel in it and it of course is absolutely insanely perfect for that effect, and then when we were um. The other, the other problem was tra is always traveling with such a massive amount of tools. But there was one shot we did, which has kind of ended up being the hero shot at the lanterns. Um, so if you bring that one up, I know it's in the set. Um, uh, you, what you'll see is 
Yeah, this one. So, so this is a crop of it, but we use this one. So the whole idea of these images was to give the impression of the car moving. So we wanted that you wanted to look at the image and make a feeling of it moving. And, and, and it was phenomenally complex. But this image here, I'm using the blue, um, uh, the blue uh, glitter stick. And I ended up using all of the glitter sticks in a bunch of portraits. But I'll tell you, this is a true story. We I looked through Lightroom last night just to make sure I had it right. It took maybe 16 attempts to get this image right, to get the, the flow of the, the blue next to the car. So we'd, do, we'd open the shutter, we'd do a test, do a test, do a test. I was happy that the image was right. And then we, we would go live, which meant I scanned the entire car. So, so the entire car is lit by hand. Then I would come back and do the, the flames. And then I would do the blue swirl. And on about the 20th attempt, um, I saw this one and, and it just blew. Well, there were 20 people on set at any time and we had a giant TV screen. So you can imagine the horror, especially when you walk into an environment this bright, knowing that the very first image you create, there's going to be 20 people, including the client that's just paid for you to travel halfway around the world, going to be staring at the image. But this those, blue... those lanterns just set it off too. It just adds to oh, the, look, everything it's about a, it. Man. It's, yeah, it's a really famous spot. But what you can see, see all the, the street lights. It was terrifying. We're going to talk about this, but yeah. So, so the the, the tools I used uh, were the glitter sticks uh, and the fiber optics, and uh, of course, uh, th there is no shoot that doesn't happen without a universal connector. Of course, right. Um, yeah. You know, my next question, um, you know, the unfortunate reality of the time of the world we live in, um, you know, working on a project like this, especially with the type of budget that Formula One would have, um, you would think that they might opt to use like uh, CGI or something like that. Could you explain to us ultimately like how this came together? How did you present to them that there is value in light painting um, to for this project? And, you know, they, they got on board with it. Well, I'll just start by saying, Jason, that could be one of the greatest questions I've ever been asked when talking about light painting, because the answer is stunning. So early on in the project, they, so if you, if you ever see any of the um, general marketing for any Formula One, but particularly the Saudi Grand Prix, all of the marketing is done using a car and it's surrounded by what appears to be moving light. So they had already done a lot of a lot of work in that genre, in that sort of feeling, but they were tossing up whether to do this or CGI. And my man over there, Ludo, who uh, was the project director, creative director, and now has become quite a good friend, him and I put a lot of energy and effort into pitching the idea that what would make this project striking is the creation of social media content around the creation of the work. And so what we have now is, is a body of, of video work. So there's a bunch of um, stories and reels and there's a short documentary being made showing clearly the process. So it's all very TikTok-y and, and speed rampy and twisty and flicky. But fundamentally, you can see clearly the process of me preparing the tools, us moving the car into the scene, me moving around the car and then moving the light and then the final image being created. And so what that does is if you just have a CGI car moving around with light around it, it's just boring as batshit normal stuff. Right. Whereas what they what they have now is this, this thing that is in this world of CGI and AI and pretend what they've got is this real human flow the creation of this thing in real time that grabs people's attention. And the reality is, you know, we, we live in this where we live and breathe light painting. The vast majority of people that will see this content would have never seen it. So if you look at, if you look at this image on the screen here, you go, Oh yeah, cool. It's a car that's being photoshopped into a scene with, with some wiggly lines around it. But once you see the, the creation of it, it just literally smacks people in the face um, with awesomeness, you know, and I mean, the challenge, the reality is the challenge we were having the whole time, especially in scenes like this, is how do you position the car so that once you've light painted it, it doesn't look unreal? Because by then, what we were finding really quick is that the way that I was lighting it by hand, the way that it shaped the car and we developed this way, it kind of looks unreal, <laughs> right. even though it is like super real, obviously.
You, you know, and another thing too, you know, this goes on with the with the next question. Um, these locations, the environment you're shooting in here is oh, super cool. The architecture, all that is, it, yeah, you know, yeah. that's for an, another thing. But the lighting, I can tell that this is all super bright. You know, how did how did you overcome oh. capturing light paintings? Um, or you know, give us some advice about capturing light paintings in an urban environment. Yeah, amazing. So so here's the thing. It was. Um... In the early stages of pitching it, there were there were many, many, many ideas. One of them was even there's a giant building in Jeddah with a, a heli helipad on the top. And, and we put a few days work into developing a program to um, helicopter the plane up onto the helipad and do some work up there. Um, that would have been amazing. But then then what we did is we, we were looking at these different sites and there's these classic historic sites in Jeddah. One of them is the lanterns. The other is that gate you saw there. And then there's a thing, a place called Old Balad which is the, the place with the old buildings in it. And so what we did is we sent a guy down with a, with a camera to start doing some video and stills and testing for me so I could get a sense of how bright it was. And I have to be honest, every time I opened up the email with the sample shots in it, it just made me feel ill. Like, right. you know, it was, they were so unbelievably bright. And now the first location was Balad, where the, where the old building is. Um, when I arrived there, there was a team of people um, that were, we, we'd done a site visit. I went two days early and we went and scoped the sites and, and we had a team of people turning lights off. I'd do a test, we'd turn some more lights off. We'd do a test, we'd turn some more lights off. And all the locations were pretty good. But then we got to that lantern site and it's in the middle of one of the most astonishingly bright places you can ever imagine and we were just never going to get those lights off so what i did jason is i i made the decision early on once we'd locked in the locations that in the studio i started doing testing of different colors and different textures and shapes to send to the client to make sure we were on point with those and i just did all of my testing at f11 and f16 so that i knew when i arrived um, would be so this location here, right? So the other thing I did is I took my Olympus. So I took an Olympus EM1X, and that was my backup emergency uh, and potentially use live composite just in case. But what I found at this site here was uh, I needed about a minute to do the whole exposure, and at f11, f9, uh, we were fine. Um, and my goal all the way through, and I think a lot of people watching this will relate was the idea is that they were engaging with an artist, right? So they were engaging with someone that was going to come along and create work uh, that had intent, had it filled the brief, it had the idea they wanted. But for me, my ultimate goal was that when that image popped up on, we had like this big 50-inch TV screen on site so that everyone could to look and watch and yippee and hoo ha and <laughs> and, um, and 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 look at me if things were going pear shaped. Um, and I wanted them to see the image on that screen that I would be delivering in the end. And I shit you not, the very, very first image that we created at the first site, the client was there. So the, the, the actual client that was, that was, that runs Formula One there in Saudi Arabia was there and she saw the image pop up and it was my heart. I, I, I it was two months of just terror, right. uh, but all of a sudden I was just banging these images out um, without any, there's, there's literally no post on these apart from adjustments. Um, there's, there was one bright spot on one building I plated out, but fundamentally every image that you'll see in this uh, campaign is straight out of camera. And that, that's awesome, man. That's always such a great feeling as a light painter. Oh. Look at your back of your camera and get it on screen. Oh. And, I mean, there's, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Look, we we yeah, and, and and we'll we'll touch on this in a bit, but I want to paint a scene for you, you know, like we pitched hard for this program. They they were very very hesitant F1. Um there was a lot of risk, there was a lot of cost. It was very very tight deadlines. So it it all came about very quick. And so when 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 the client is standing there, literally watch, there was no testing. When the client's standing there looking at the images come up on the screen, I was just, 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 you know, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to, to describe the, right. the horror of, of the fair, but yeah, it all came together pretty quick, which tell, is amazing. Tell us about the, um, tell us about your team. Um, you know, the, the team that you had there working and I know you sent me a picture. Um, who are these gentlemen here? 
Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll leave this on the screen while I'm talking about it because this Definitely. is really important. Um, I, I, I have been. Um, well, I, I, I hesitate to use the word lucky. My light painting has allowed me to see the world. Um, I have been to some pretty astonishing places uh, to do work commercially and and personally. And the reality is that when you when you do work at this scale or even a mid scale or whatever you know it, it, as soon as you're moving out of your studio or heading out to the to the hills on your own it takes a large group of people to make something like this happen and prior to going there was um you know i mean i mean it goes without saying that that you know david gilliver and i uh he, he was a massive part of my prep for this you know on on supporting me through the nerves <laughs> mainly um, but we talked a lot of technical stuff. So we worked together. And then on the ground there, there was uh, a main guy. So he was my uh, main contact creative director. But each night that we went out, there were around 20 to 30 people on site. Uh, and and the tw 20 of those people that were made up of my team. So that was um, people like these three guys here who who were, uh, and, I, and I, you can't see me, but I'm doing inverted commas, laborers. So these guys pushed stuff around, carried stuff, moved stuff. Then there were two or three people that were above them. Then there were the technical team. So people that were organizing um, uh, technical stuff. Uh, I had a support person that made sure I consumed water because it was like 36 degrees and, and humid all the time. So there was a massive, massive team of people we were managing each night. But these three guys are what my travel and what I love to think my work is about. None of these guys spoke a word of English. And every single night they would turn up at maybe 10 p.m. and stay awake and working through till some, the sun came up. And every night I would go over and sit with them and 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 say hi, shake their hands, have a chat without chatting. And it's always a reminder, you know, that when I travel or when I work, it's about the people for me. You know, we we and this this circles back around to to adding value to your light painting to do commercial work. If you leave a job like this after I was there for 12 days, and their memory is that you were easy to work with, a huge amount of fun. When shit went pear-shaped, you just stepped up and made it work. You didn't moan. You just sweated your, your guts out. And if you just leave the job having been a good human and worked hard, that's the shit that they remember. And that's the reason why you'll get taken back. The fact that you happen to make a light painting image or meet their expectations is kind of a bonus. But um, yeah, huge team of people, and 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 what I did is every single morning I would send them a message with a with a with an image, and I would make sure they knew that without every single one of them, there is absolutely no way the image would have happened. Could could you tell like just the expressions on their on their face, like seeing light painting for for the first time, like oh, just man, blown away? These three. These three guys here were just tripping balls every time we went on to site. Like they were, they were just because I'd bring them in. They'd go sit like over there. I'd I'd say come here, and they'd be standing next to the client watching. You know, it was it was just yeah. Everyone like I I I that video that we showed before of me doing that light painting with the guy sitting on the car. I had a deal uh, that I didn't want to know who anyone was that came on set. So that when I when I was doing a portrait with them, I didn't want to know how important they were. And that guy was literally the boss of uh, Formula One Saudi Arabia. And he had a blast. And you can see at the end of the video, you know, he comes and wraps his arms around me and he's just absolutely having a ball uh, watching the light painting come together, you know. And, and it just reminds me that, yeah, but what that meant is that then every other night, the first two hours were spent making portraits of VIPs and the client, which was cool because it gave me a chance to set up and test light and test tools and stuff. It was awesome. Right. And we do have that video coming up, by the way, that you you kept mentioning. It's it's coming up. But, um, you know, I see opportunities like this and I can't help but feel a sense of pride knowing that, you know, something that I'm personally passionate about um, is getting the recognition that it deserves, you know, around the world. Um, you know, as a professional light painter, what advice would you give other light painters in pursuing these these types of opportunities and showing that there is value in light painting in major markets around the world? I know you kind of hit on that earlier. Is, is, is there anything you could add to that? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, uh, I've been mulling this question, Jason, and and uh, it, it's it's a little complicated, right? Because 
I don't want to blow smoke up anyone's ass. The reality is, right, if you if you seriously want to pursue opportunities like this for, in commercial light painting, the advice, the best advice I can give is to sit back, really, really have a good solid think about exactly what that means, right? And if you want to go out and have and write an invoice to someone and deliver them a set of images or video content around light painting that they will love and will ensure that you do future work. Well, the advice that I can give, and this is going to be hard for some people to hear, is you got to be realistic, right? Having, if, if you use the amount of likes and followers you have on social media as a gauge for how good your light painting is, um, you're heading down the wrong path Absolutely. To, this kind, to, the, to this kind of work. I'll tell you something interesting. I, when this client booked me, I had less than 700 followers on Instagram. They didn't give a shit how many followers I had on Instagram, how many likes my images got. It had absolutely zero to do with getting this job. They really didn't even care that much about the images that they saw of mine around light painting cars, right? What they cared about and what really matters in this end of our business or this end of the art form and this end of the business is that you carry yourself in a professional way. You need to be able to walk into a room and have a serious business conversation. You need to understand ROIs. You need to understand the business of marketing. You need to understand you know, expectations around what they want, what they're doing. Just because you make pretty images is about 5% of actually doing this type of work. And this word is important, successfully, right? You can get paid to do light painting, but to get paid to do it properly is a whole nother level. And so look, the advice that I would give to anyone is if you think you're a good light painter or you think you make light painting images that have commercial value, take the time to go away and study and learn about the business of art, the business of marketing, the business of advertising. Learn how to write a proposal. Um, yeah, I'm trying to keep this paragraph short because I'm very passionate about it. You know, I I, I have been, um, like I say, I, I I've done a lot of this kind of stuff, and it took me a long, long time to understand that um, there is a very the 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 bridge the bridge that goes between making beautiful images that people like uh, and and seriously making serious images that people pay money for. That is a very tenuous bridge um, and it is full of holes. Um, yeah, I, I could talk for hours on on how to how to develop a business around uh, no, that, the opportunity. Yeah, that's great. That's that's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but, but, I, but I but I but mate, I think the key. I, I, if 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 people take one thing away from this talk, that is that that if you if you can if you, oh, this is a cool video. I hope it plays smoothly. Um, so this oh, video, wow. this this portrait and this video will probably be the reason I go back in and create a proper body of work at the Grand Prix next year. Um, yeah, wicked. So we hand scanned every single image. I'm an old man. My back was killing me every night. It was crazy. We did over 150 uh, of these. Um, well, it's it's great work, man. And, and you know, I wrote thanks. in closing that, you know, I just just want to say thank you for the work that you do and, and you know, inspiring. Um, it's really inspiring what you, what, you, what you did with this project, man. And, oh, thanks, man. Thank you. you know, I appreciate the fact that you took something and you showed that, you know, it, it, if you have this idea and you have these things that th those opportunities are achievable. Um, you just got to oh. put your mind to it and, and you know, you, you can make it happen. You know, there are people I'll that... Leave, I'll leave you. So. Yep. yep. I'll, leave, I'll leave you with one thing. I'll leave you with one thing, right? I I have two very clearly defined aspects for my art practice. One is one is the financial side, which over the last few years waned for all sorts of reasons. Um, and then I have my my personal practice, right? So that's that's things like my ball of light project, the duality thing I did a couple of years ago, right? Or last year. I have a very clearly defined aspect of my work that is commercial and personal. And if you make the decision to have a crack at making a bit of a living from light painting. Try and keep a barrier between the two. You've got to remember to take the time to go out 
and really just like I, I do. I went to the beach two nights ago and I was in the middle of post-production for this project. And I just went and spent a night on the beach making ball of light images, just really reminding myself why it is I do this thing, you know, and, and I think it's easy to get lost in this sort of desire to, to push in a certain direction. And, and the other thing is you're right, Jason, you know, any one of us, anyone that has picked up a light painting tool can go out and pursue this type of thing, but just start, start small. You know, if you live in a town, go find someone that has a small business, have a think of an idea that where you can add some light painting to, to their product or their business and start small, you know, don't, don't, it takes small steps, small steps. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I just want to say thank you again, man. Really appreciate you being here, Dennis. Uh, tremendous job on this project. And, you know, just always keep pushing, creating and showing us all that, you know, that there there is a market for the ideas that we have, you know, and you just yeah. so we I know I appreciate it. I know a lot of people appreciate that. So thank Amazing, you. Amazing, man. Well, it's my pleasure. And, and um, thank you guys for everything that you do. It's nice to be reconnecting. That's for sure.